Hi, welcome to Matters of the Heart and Soul. I'm your host, Janie Charlo. Matters of the Heart and Soul is a podcast to raise awareness and awaken humanity to all that is within. We want to be a beacon of light on your life journey. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Matters of the Heart and Soul Podcast. This is Janie Charlo, your host. And what we have coming up for you guys is overcoming the fear of death. And we just really wanted to get this particular episode out because it's so important that we live now, that we live fearlessly. And um, death is actually a huge fear of humanity. And it's so important that we understand it, we talk about it, we research new death experiences and reincarnation, but most importantly, that we live each day. So Russell and I, we attack this, um, this topic in what you're about to hear, and we will see you on the other side. Take care. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast. My name is Janie Charlo, your host, and I am co-hosting with the handsome Russell Bruce. Hello, everybody. All right, guys. So um, today's podcast, we are talking about overcoming the fear of death. And uh, Russell and I, we had just been kind of deciding on um, this among many titles of what we wanted to talk about on the next episode, because there's so many things that we really, really have to talk about. But um, we really want to talk about overcoming the fear of death. We are seeing death all around us. And I think that it's important that we somewhat talk about it because it's actually known as one of the biggest fears of humanity, even though no one ever talks about it. So we want to talk about it. We want to bring it out into the light, take it out of darkness. um, And we just kind of want to just get an understanding of what's really going on um, with a lot of the things that we're seeing around us, including our family members. Okay. Yeah. And before we go on, I'd just like to uh, say rest in power to Brother Takuna El Shabazz, whom I had the uh, privilege of doing a podcast with several months back. Also, a little over a month ago, we were able to do a radio and television show with him in Louisiana, and he has since passed on and went on to the ancestral realm. And, uh, you know, like what we're going to discuss today, you know, it's more of a celebration of all of his accomplishments and everything that he lived for. All right. Yep. Um, definitely uh, want to definitely sing tribute to his soul. His soul goes on and on. So again, this podcast, guys, is about awakening humanity to everything that is already within. So if this episode resonate with your soul, let us know. Take whatever you can from this episode. If it does not resonate, leave it on the shelf, okay? Um, Again, this is all about talking about the things that has lied dormant within us for many, many reasons. And we want to reawaken to everything that is already within. So let's talk about overcoming the fear of death. First of all, I just like to say that I like to use the term transition versus death because death seems so uh, final. final. And we know that the soul's evolution goes on and on and on. It's infinite. It is it is a part of the whole and the whole is a part of it. We are a part of it. So it's not final. So I like to use the term transition. So Talking about it and, and understanding what death is, is, is vital to, to accepting it and not fearing it. So what are some things that you would like to say about that, Russell? One of the things I'd like to say before we even move on, so this will probably help people understand what we're thinking when we say what we say, right? So we are not just our biological, physical bodies, right? 
everybody out there for the most part has some type of religious or spiritual belief. And even an agnostic or an atheist, there's something they believe in, whether it's science, God, spirituality, that all of it at the end of the day is dealing with the soul and energy. And we've said this many a times, and I'll say it again, that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It just moves and changes shape and form, meaning that it always was and it always will be. So when we talk about a God or say the most high, we're talking about a spirit or an energy that we're all connected to. It's in everything and everybody. So that human soul is an energy or a light body. So when this biological spacesuit that we're in, when it expires and we, we return it back to the earth, our soul continues on. So we're here on a soul journey in a solar system, in a sun system. So just to set that as a foundation for, you know, the information that we're about to present, that the human soul is who we really are, consciousness. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, are concerned with where is our soul is going to go after this physical life. But none of us really think, where was your soul before it was born into this physical reality? Because it was somewhere. You didn't pop up out of a vacuum. So let's start from there. Mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is definitely the right foundation. Um, I just want to say that if we are on the foundation that we are spirit, then it is very, very important that we do not become attached to the physical identity, which includes the body. It's important we take care of our body. We give it the proper nutrition. We give it the proper rest. We give it the things that it needs because it, it holds our soul. But we cannot become attached to it because it goes back to the earth, as Russell just said. And here's a question just to ponder on. What happens when there is a physical change in the body, such as a bilateral leg amputation? Are you not your soul because you now don't have any legs? Are you not your soul because you can't walk? So that's just something for you guys just to ponder a little bit deeper on and who we really are and not being so attached to the physical body. OK, um, that's very, very important. And, you know, with that, you know, say if you were to lose your limb, so to speak, you're still you at the core mm -hmm. as long as is the mind and the heart are still intact, you're still connected to everything in this reality because it really is more or less like an antenna or an amplifier that keeps you connected to everything. So it's all about that, that heart, mind, soul space. Yeah. And the brain is of the body but the mind is of spirit and consciousness. And that's the difference. So if you want to kind of know like, well, what's physical uh, and what's not, what's non-physical, your brain is definitely a part of the body, uh, but your mind and your consciousness is not. You cannot see your mind. You cannot see your thoughts. So that is a part of the spirit. All right. They're not local. Not local. All right. So let's talk about death and rebirth because it's all around us it's in nature and if we we want to talk about death of the physical body the biological body then we should take a look in nature you know there's a sprint a spring and there's a winter spring is new birth you know winter is death it's all around us you know we see it in the flowers uh you know flowers die and then rebloom again yeah like we could use for an example uh, that spring equinox, which many celebrate Easter during that time, which is tied to the religious holiday, right? And and they use as its symbol a bunny rabbit and chicken eggs, which never did figure out 
that combination. But anyway, a uh, rabbit doesn't lay eggs. And also, uh, it's the fact that, you know, after winter, you know, during that spring equinox or say Easter, the earth is coming back to life. So that's when the leaves begin to turn green again and the grass begins to grow and turn green. And rabbits represent fertility because it's during that time they do a lot of mating and there's a lot of little bunnies that are created. So that's why the bunny was used as a symbol of fertility or birth or rebirth, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the winter time, that winter solstice, uh, you know, if you study a lot of uh, how these Christmas, say the things around Christmas came about, like let's say the evergreen tree, it was the only thing that remained green in these colder climates during the winter. So they looked at it as if it had mystical, magical powers. So they would chop it down and take it into their homes and deck it in silver and gold. I think scripture even says something is Jeremiah 10, where it says, don't follow the way of the heathen for he would go out and chop down the, the tree, the evergreen tree and, and, and nail it to the ground and deck it in silver and gold and all these things. So a lot of that was symbolic to this changing of seasons going from spring to winter, which was dealing with life. And death. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, you know, the soul is the same way. It comes a point in the soul's evolution where it has to exchange the physical vessel for a newer, more higher vibrational vessel. And um, we are in a change of times and we have, I like to kind of, I think of it almost like a changing of the guards. We have a lot of souls going and coming right now. And I think that's what we're witnessing around us. So if we can become uh, unattached to the physical, the physical vessel, when we see our loved ones transition, because they're all around us, um, you know, and I'm sure people have had a lot of experiences with people that have uh, transitioned that have been close to them. You know, you if they were a smoker, perhaps you smelt their cigarette smoke around you within the first few days of them passing or you got a whiff of their perfume or, you know, a red bird came and, you know, and you were thinking of them, just all of these things that happen. And we always second guess it, but we should not, we should actually go on that first. All right. So that's, you know, talking about it and understanding it in order to accept physical death. And also sometimes we as individuals go through a death and rebirth cycle as well. And it's, it doesn't lead to a physical death, but there is a, a spiritual death and a rebirth. And sometimes that happens. And my best uh, advice is to surrender to that process. It is your soul trying to evolve into a newer version, basically. Right. You know, perhaps you have, you know, um, you got to the next level, you know, and now there's there's a new journey that you're on. And so you'll experience that within your your spirit and your soul as well. And, you know, you it may feel like a physical death. Sometimes we call it death of the ego. Um, and it feels like a spiritual death because everything you thought you knew is like, whoa, this is totally different. So just surrender to that process. All right. You know, and also um, within the Christian church, they say it's being born again, right? Exactly. 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 You know, and it exactly. says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You become a new being. Exactly. And you, you know, you connect to some something higher than yourself and you start to realize that, hey, it, this thing is bigger than me. Yep. And uh, that there's somebody else or something else out there that's, you know, controlling this. Like there's, you There's come into that new knowledge, laws, yep. like immutable laws that we must all follow in order to maximize this life and the next life to come. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk a little bit about near death experiences and reincarnation. And we think that, you know, overcoming the fear of death is becoming comfortable with it. So perhaps researching near death experiences and reincarnation, um, you know, in our research, you know, a lot of people 
define uh, death as literally stepping from one room into the next. Like literally, there is, you know, they didn't feel no pain. It was literally going from one one room to the next, which is from one existence to the next. So it's like from a physical form to a non-physical form. And, um, you know, that's how they explain it. So I think researching near-death experiences, seeing what people have actually went through and what they have to say because they came back for a reason and seeing what their experience was like, you know, takes that fear away from death as well. And, and you have thousands of accounts from all over the world, different religious backgrounds, different age groups, different languages, and they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. You know, we have a podcast on it actually exactly. with uh, Scott. Scott Mesta. Yes. Um, on near death experiences. It was a really good podcast. It really gives you uh, a great perspective on on what what all this is what all to about expect and, yeah and what, what these people actually went through and um you know one of one of the things is that you know say for example there's a guy daniel brinkley he has a book that i read years ago called peace in the light this guy actually died a couple times he was struck by lightning and was pronounced dead and i think he was dead for approximately 20 minutes and he talked about what happened when he transitioned to the other side. He, he talked about how his soul left the body. He's in the operating room floating above his body and the doctors, and he could hear what they were talking about. He even mentioned that the plant, he said he could feel the plants in the room. And he said the plants really cared more about him than the people did. You know, because what had happened is his soul being an energy body became one with everything in the room and beyond. Uh, you hear stories of people who were either, you know, pronounced dead or in a coma who floated up the hallway and could hear what the nurse was saying at, at the desk at the end of the hall. And, and they could tell they came when they did come back, they could tell them what was on top of the light fixture out in the hallway, it was something that the only way you would have been able to see is to get up there on a ladder to look at. So it, it's tons of things like that. Those are just little, I could tell you many others, and I'm gonna give one account here. And the reason why we give these is because once you start to hear and see the commonalities between all of them, because when these people crossed over to the other side and they seen the light beings or, or some say they seen God, they didn't want to come back. And those who were told that it wasn't their time or they had a, a certain mission to accomplish and they were sent back into their bodies, they talk about that story as well, about how it was so dense, you know, because they became one with everything when they left their physical body, their soul or their energy body became one with everything. They were able to fly around and be anywhere and everything. But then now all of a sudden they had to come back into this trauma, this trauma body, because, you know, if they were in a car accident or mm -hmm. they were drowning or whatever, they had to come back into the body and feel the pain and be condensed into this body. So a lot of us, we love this life, but by the time you hear some of these stories, you're like, you know, not that you have a death wish or anything, but you tend to fear crossing over as much once you really start to understand. But here's, here's one story that sticks out in my head. There was a, a young kid who, who kept saying to his parents that he remembered his, his prior life and he knew where his body was built. He buried, he said that he was murdered in this village. A guy hit him in the head with an ax and buried his body and buried the ax nearby. And he kept telling his parents that, and, and he was a young kid. I think he's around seven years old or so. You could probably find this on YouTube. And uh, at first it sounded crazy, but after he kept saying it, saying it, saying it, and he knew where this place was located, he kept describing it. And after a while, his parents did some research, found out the place existed. And the guy was still alive that actually murdered him in his prior life. And they go to the village 
and they actually found the guy. He confronts the guy about killing him. The guy actually broke down and cried and admitted that he did it. The kid takes them to where hit the body of who he was in his prior life. They dig up the body. He also took them to where the ax was buried. Coincidence? I don't think so. One of the other things is that he had a birthmark on his head where he was hitting the head in his prior life with the ax. So a lot of times you hear these stories that birthmarks are normally like people who fought in World War II or World War One, and they were shot in the leg and they come back in this lifetime. And they have a birthmark in their leg where they were shot in a prior life because normally these are just energy markers, right? So that that's a story there. I have several others that stood out too because I actually did a lot of research on this myself before mm-hmm. we interviewed Scott, but let's, um, let's continue. Yeah, let's, let's talk about reincarnation. So basically reincarnation is the philosophical concept that a living being begins a new life in a different physical form or body after biological death. So, and again, we're not trying to sway anybody's uh, belief at all. Again, if any of this resonate with you, then awesome. Um, however, I would like to just kind of bring up perhaps when you say, oh, I'm an old soul. Why do you feel you're an old soul? You know, perhaps you've been doing this for millions and millions and millions of years or reincarnations. And, uh, you know, I like to say that reincarnation really just gives us more opportunities to get it right. We come back each time so that we could get it right. We learn the lessons. Earth is just a classroom. It's a soul classroom Mm -hmm. to refine the soul. Like in your last life, you may have been given the gift of beauty and all you did was manipulated people or, you know, you were just a shrewd businessman and, you know, you didn't know how to collaborate with others or whatever. So a lot of times, you know, we choose to come back and, and play, get it right. out, play out a role. It's, yep. it's no different than let's let's hypothetically say it this way: like God is a Hollywood movie director, and you know he says, "Okay, you know, what role do you want to play?" Because you know, and these roles are going to be based upon what lesson do you want to learn. If you want to learn how to love, because in your last life you didn't love properly, mm-hmm. or you just you didn't know how to tap in for whatever reason. It could have been the way you were raised or things that happened during that life, et cetera. So you're sent back to learn to love. So you're like, okay, I want to play this role. And then you say, I want to be in this type of family. I want this to happen. I want these events to occur to bring me to that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way it all plays out. So what we think is really a life is just a blink in eternity. Right. Yeah. So if there, that, there is no time or time. There is no time, really. Yeah. We're, um, we're only trapped in time here because right. we're in this linear yeah. play, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Right. But, exactly. But that's reincarnation. And I would just like to pose a question. And I like posing questions because it allows you to go deeper. Um, you know, when we when we see that someone has transitioned, we always say, well, they're in a better place now. Where is that place? Where is it? Where is, where that is place? heaven? Yeah. Like, where are they? So I think we, it's not, that's how you know the soul knows because it, sometimes we say things and and some people just say things because they repeat what other people say. They've heard everybody say it, so it's just the thing to say. But sometimes you, you do feel that. It resonates deep with you. And so we always say that, well, they're in a better place now. So that's just a question for you to ponder on. Um, you know, you know, as far as reincarnation, you know, and we, we, we have to be realistic that most of the religions and so forth that we participate in today are just a bunch of uh, stories that have been handed down generation to generation through the ages. And in a lot of them, if you really study them, they have changed over a course of time. Like 
if you look at the early Christian church at one point, uh, reincarnation played a big role in the Christian church, mm -hmm. you know, and there's been some nine ecumenical councils. Uh, Council of Nicaea is the most noted one that was around 325 AD under Constantine, but there were many others and one of the other uh, one of the others probably say somewhere around 400 or so years ago or 400 AD, excuse me. And at that particular council is when they decided to remove reincarnation from the faith, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have to ask yourself why, you know, and just thinking off the top of my head, how can you control a people that no longer fear, fear death? If you made them feel that this is the end all be all, then they would do anything to hold on to it, including allow someone to subdue them mm -hmm. and to hold them back and to hold them down. Whereas if you realize how powerful you were and how infinite the soul is, and you would live a little bit more fearlessly, you know, because like they say, Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Mm -hmm. Which brings me into my next point, um, you know, overcoming the fear of death. We should live each day. Death is certain, so we should definitely focus on the present moments. Uh, when we see loved ones transition, we should honestly send their spirit and their soul onto their next phase in love. We shouldn't, um, we shouldn't go into or spiral into the lower vibrations of mourning and um, those type of things because, honestly, the soul is an energetic being. So it, it makes it hard for that soul to, to transition when because that pull, and we've actually heard that on a lot of near-death experiences, that they, they feel and they hear the mourning of their loved ones when they're on the other side they they feel that so we should we should celebrate our loved ones um in love for everything that they did and their journey on this physical plane and we should send them off into the next their next realm in love all right and if we really really think about it when we want somebody to stay here with us it's really selfish it's really selfish because they're around us. Their spirit is around us all the time. So to want to hold on to the physical of, of someone that we care about or someone that was, you know, a part of our life, it, we have to just let, just surrender and let it go, not mm -hmm. hold on to that. And, and enjoy them and give them their flowers while they're here, you know? Yep. And like they say that they, they, God really just, loaning him to us for a time yeah you know and there's <clears throat> gonna come a time when god's gonna call them back yeah I, I would say you know just be inspired to live be inspired to live on purpose be inspired to to get these soul lessons and, and keep moving and keep moving up and elevating, you know, be inspired to be like, I'm going to win this, I'm, this lifetime, I'm getting it right. You know, so be inspired. Don't, don't shrink into fear because of death or because of, you know, someone that you were close to, because the truth is we come into this world alone and we will leave alone. So we are responsible for our own soul's journey. All right. Everybody's playing a part. Everybody's either the teacher or the student. So each person, each soul you come in contact with in your life, they're either there to teach you or to are you to um, to teach them. OK, so it's an earth classroom. So be here, be present while you're here, live, focus on each moment. And when that time is done, you're on to the next room, which honestly, it's it's a good thing because you're moving on. And um, believe, you know, and believe is be and live what you profess. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just don't profess it with your mouth. Be it and live it. Yeah. We are here to experience. Almost everyone that you talk to, uh, 
that is, you know, they they're preparing themselves to die a lot or transition. A lot of them talk about the things they wanted to do, you know. And I'll use my own dad, you know, when he was transitioning, he spoke on a lot of things that he wanted to do, you know, the things he wanted, the places he wanted to go, the things he wanted to do. And we're here to experience. We're here is we're all individual gods, truthfully, sparks of the greater spirit body. Children Ex of the most high. Exactly. It's experiencing everything. And that's how the soul grows. The soul expands because the soul is a part of the whole oneness. So I always encourage people, get out of your box, go see something different, go, even if it's going to work, take a different route, expand your, your consciousness, expand your knowledge. And therefore you're going to expand your soul. Your soul is, that's what it wants to do. That's how it evolves and grows just like a kid. It, it wants to grow and grow and grow yeah. and learn lessons and learn the lessons, the spiritual lessons. Exactly. That's what it's about. Because that soul is, like we said, it, it's like those people who, who their soul left the body and then it had to come back, right? It's trapped, trapped inside this space suit, which we call our body. And it's trying to express itself and expand out. So it's like, if it can't get out of the body, which it does, it's sleep when you sleep, you know, like they say, sleep is a co cousin of death because the soul goes out and explores like the body gets tired. Really the soul gets tired mm -hmm. and the body has to rest. Right. So when you travel, you know, your soul's getting a chance to move around, you know, inside of the body. Right. So traveling, like Janie said, take a different route you know, go to the art museum, do things that are pleasing to the soul. Like the soul wants to experience things. It wants to taste different food, smell different scents, hear different music. It wants to experience and expand. And that's how we grow. You know, a, a lot of times, you know, I know a lot of people who haven't even traveled outside of their state, let alone got on an airplane or whatever. But, you know, you want to go to heaven, but yet you haven't even flown out of your state. It's like, I don't get that. So get out, explore, expand, meet new people, meet people in different cultures, you know, learn more. And I think what that does is it kind of helps expand the soul and refine you. Like they say, like learn another language, like language ties you into the heart of a culture. I think mm -hmm. a lot of problems that we have with, say, racism and classism and things like that. You know, there's not enough knowledge of the other side. Yeah. You know, and it's true. The more you experience and expand, the more you really, truly see the oneness that we're really all connected, you know, on a much deeper level. Thanks. So, yeah. So, guys, we're going to wrap it up. That is our time today. Um we just finished talking about overcoming the fear of death. And we said, number one, talk about it and understand it. Number two, research near-death experiences and reincarnation and get an idea of that for yourself. And number three, live each day. All right. That's how we can overcome the fear of death. Death is a cycle. It is something we all have to go through and we should not fear it. We actually should understand it accept it, accept it in others and, um, and know what to expect when that time comes. All right. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add, Russell? Yeah. I just want to say one more thing. I remember going to a funeral before and a minister said this and it stuck with me. It says that we go through life as if life is certain and death is uncertain, but in fact, it's a complete opposite. Life is uncertain. Death is certain. Mm -hmm. You know, we all will pass this physical realm, but it's not the end of the road for the soul. So exactly. Do soul work. Yes. All right, guys, this has been another episode of Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast. My name is Janie Charlo, and this was Russell Bruce. 
And this podcast is a podcast inspired to raise awareness and awaken humanity to everything that is already within. This is how we connect our hearts with our minds. This podcast is inspired by love, God, relationships, spirituality, justice, culture, family, children, finances, freedom, personal growth, energy and vibrations, universal principles, health, education, masculine and feminine energies, music, and all things of the heart and soul. As always, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Hey guys, I'm back again. This is Janie Charlo, and we just wanted to take a little time to give some props to our sponsorships. We just want to thank Anchor for being our sponsor here to get our podcast going. So we want you all as our listeners to maybe shed some light and into your own perspective and in your own journey of life and maybe start your own podcast, just as Anchor gave matters of the heart and soul a life and it came to life through Anchor. So consider Anchor for your podcasting.